Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bross Swalls here with Soviet Craft for another episode of uh, How to Feed the Beast. This time, talking about crafting. Mostly auto-crafting, but we'll begin with regular crafting. So, as you know, there's a crafting table. Uh, just, you know, regular vanilla stuff. Uh, there is something called the crafting station, which is crafted by simply placing a crafting table into the crafting grid, and then you get a crafting station. And the difference between uh, the regular crafting table and crafting station is that items can stay in this even when you exit and walk away and want to come back, get some resources, and come back, do more stuff. Also, you can turn this into a crafting station, which is a slab, like this one. They uh they they don't really stack on top of each other. You can't have like one full block, but it's pretty cool. You know, if you want to have smaller things, you can also make furnaces like this from Tinker's construct. Next, uh, move on to applied energistics. Um, some pretty neat neat things here. Uh, as you know, you can you have uh, some ME terminals. You can take out items and put them in, store them on disks and stuff. And on here, you can. You can use this to make yourself whatever you need out of whatever materials here. You can um, also use it use it with um, NEI. You can uh, do this. Actually, since one second, yes. Now, so if I want to press, for example, R on this, it'll uh, show me this, and I can question mark it. And if I had the right resources it would show up here and you can just drag it out right away. Uh, another neat thing, if you didn't know, you can have this um, uh, ME assembler, which is a multi-block structure, which is kind of expensive. Um, either here or here, you can access it from any the terminal or the crafting terminal. And if you press here, crafting, uh, you can craft this from the wood that we have. Let's, let's do 64. And it will quickly craft your uh, required amount. It'll give you 64 logs and then you can craft even even more. Do whatever you want. Uh, the way that works is um, you have to put a crafting um, encoded pattern into the uh, ME assembler, molecular assembler, and uh, then it will um, uh, you can be used through one of these access terminals. The way you encode things is through here. You put the um, coding pattern here, make set up your pattern and, and code, and you can just place that or drop that right in here and um, use it from any access terminal to craft your things. Uh, what is this? It's a tree. Um, but anyway, the way to build this, you will need some uh, assembler containment walls on the outside. You can do it in varying sizes. I'm pretty sure it has to be square or a uh, prism of some sort, or a cube, I mean a cube or a prism of some sort. So the the outer edges have to be out of ME containment walls, assembly containment walls. The sides have to be made out of this, the heat vents. And on the inside, you have to have at least one ME provider, pattern provider. Uh, in there, I have half pattern providers, and the other half is crafting CPUs. You do not need these. They just make um, your crafting faster. You mostly need this because here's the space where you need to put your actual pattern coders. And uh, that's the end of story. You absolutely need this. Also, this requires power. You have uh, this, this takes different kinds of power. Uh, you can use industrial craft, you can use thermal expansion, you can use build craft, whatever your heart desires. Next, we will uh, move on to thermal expansion with the cyclic assembler. Um, uh, it's a little bit similar to the former Red Power um, project table, except here it uses energy, and you can use liquids with this. But the similarity is that you can have schematics and you make it with blue dye. So um, the way you make schematics is you make them in a machinist workbench, and you can encode them and such. Um, and the way you do it here, for example, let's see schematic for oak wood. Also, if you press shift, it shows you what the actual item is. You can put this here and it just starts making that for you. See? Quickly make 64 planks. Now, if we want to make uh, creosote wood, which is uh, made by combining wood and a bottle of creosote, as you can see here, um, you can do that here, too. And it'll make it using this tank full of creosote oil. Simple as that. 
uh, you don't need to have the bottles. It just pulls out of here if it uses the um, or like forge dictionary whatever for any liquids and um, that's that you can you can do some complex recipes with this and uh, you can have several of them next to each other pump out to the next one uh, pumping them out to the next ones and uh, make more and more of whatever you need like in a assembly is in a cyclic assembly <laughs> Another neat thing added by translocators by Chicken Bones is uh, this. If you press C while facing the ground, whoa, you have your own little crafting grid. No way. Let's see. Let's set up something like this. And click on, like, mouse over it and press C. And you get the item that you're crafting there. Not very good for crafting several items, but if you're on the go, you, you, can, you can quickly do that. Cool. Next, we'll go to the Liquid Crafter for Umbrella uh, Mine Factor Reloaded. Uh, it kind of crashes my game every time I try it, so let's skip that. If you know how to how that works, how to make it work in the Dire Wolf 20 pack, uh, please write that in the comments. Um, then we have the Arcane Work Table. You use this for Thawmcraft, but it works like a regular uh, crafting table, except things stay inside the work table. Just, you know... Do we need to do? Whatever, man. Same, same thing. Next, we have the uh, advanced crafting table. Uh, as you can see here, the the interface is slightly confusing, but uh, do not fret. Here we have uh, the actual crafting grid, um, which uses ghost items. And here's the output. And here's the like more output area. So. For example, this is a good example with the uh, logs. Let's give it some power. Uh. Oh, right. <laughs> Let us give it some power. Um. Of course. Of course, I am goofing right now. So now that it has power, it will provide lasers into here, and it will um, create stuff. So here, if we didn't have this inventory, after it got to 64, it will stay here, because there's no more no more space for this to go. But with this, um, there'll be an output for, for the output to go to, like a secondary output, like uh, more space for the output. So you can get more... Uh, you can do more at a time. Also, it crafts pretty fast. It's quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Although the recipe might be slightly expensive and you need to use a lot of power. So, just you use it at your own discretion, man. Just do whatever. Alright, next we have um, the Computer Craft Crafty Turtle. Uh, let's do this. Craft 4. It'll use this. Um, this thing to use your to craft your items. I'm not good at coding. I don't really know how to use computer craft. If you want to look up more, go ahead. Look up look up the code, how to craft uh, more complex recipes. Um, just putting it out there. You can use this. It's involved in crafting. You can move them around, do a bunch of coolio crafting stuff. The world is your oyster, man. Then we have the uh, work table from, uh, from Forestry. Uh, it reminds us all of the... Uh, project table from red power which was super nice and we miss red power i miss red power lrm please come back uh anyway so uh let's look here we can do things like this we like oh i want some uh, oak planks and there's oak planks in here we'll click on the the recipe like log this recorder here and you can just do that all right cool now i want sticks make some sticks make a lot of sticks make so many however many sticks you want and here, now I want ladders. Let's make some ladders. And also, of course, you can, or you can clear crafting gear grid if you want buttons. Once you craft things, it'll, they'll appear here, and you can use them in the future. So pretty neat, but it only holds eight, I believe. I'm not really sure how to delete things from here. You might have to just break the... the. You can lock the recipes. You might have to just break this... this uh, this block to if you want to make more. Uh, next, we have uh, the carboner, which isn't really auto crafting because you can't craft everything in here. But for a lot of recipes that use some sort of liquid, 
uh, the carpenter will use less liquid than a full bucket, where in other cases you'll need like a whole creosote cell or like a creosote bottle or a bottle of anything else or a, a cell or a can of anything else. Here, in many situations, it will use less of the liquid, giving you the same output with le using less liquid. So, like right now, you can you can make some uh, wooden ties. It's a little bit slow because I'm using steam engines. Uh, but yeah, same thing. Just use a little bit of less creosote oil. But there's an infinite supply of creosote oil here, so it doesn't diminish. Next, this really cool one that I just learned about when I was looking up more things for this uh, spotlight. The um, factorization compression crafter. Really, really neat. Multi-block structure and use blocks for your crafting grid. Um, I mean barrels as blocks, but yeah. So, check this out. I hit this lever. What? It just it just crafts you half a stack of barrels right now. What? No way. Let's try it again. See this, this stuff moves? It just uses another half a stack? Just makes another half a stack of barrels, dude. Just use whatever recipe you want. If you want to look cool and have giant crafting tables that make you stacks like half stacks at a time <laughs> the world is your oyster man you go girl next we have the stamper and the packager from uh, also factorization so the stamper will pretty much convert whatever you need from one item to several items or whatever if you just have like one item will craft into another item like this automatically so from blocks of cold coke it will go to cold coke cool this does the opposite. This uses either a 9x9 or a 4x4. If this is able to be in a 4x4, it'll go in a 4x4 grid. If this can be in a 9x9 grid, it'll do 9x9. Uh, craft in a 9x9 and output whatever the output would be. So here, it looks at the 4x4. Stone makes uh, stone bricks. And just converts that right that. Like that. Requires no power. Just by itself does things. Requires a piston though. Then we have the Buildcraft Auto Workbench. It um, it just just uh you know, makes things for you, automatically. It takes some time, of course, but um, works like a charm. Let's see, uh, see here it doesn't keep going, because uh, it wants you to pump things out, and then when you pump things out with pipes or item ducts, then it'll keep making more. Just like that. Next, a really neat, neat thing that we have here is the uh, logistics pipe crafting logistics pipes crafting system. So, there here we have a requester pipe. Hit it with a wrench or a crescent hammer, and you can uh, request some some planks. Request, request one, okay. And let's see what happens. Twenty three. And, um, so you see, uh, it went into here. <laughs> okay, let me explain what happened. So, here we have a chest connected to logis logistics systems from the provider. We have a crafting logistics pipe. And we have, um, a workbench and a provider pipe. So, when, I mean, request pipe. When you request things, it takes things out of the chest, puts them into the workbench, because here, um... I had the same recipe, and put it and put it here. Um, it take, puts it into the workbench, and it outputs whatever you requested. You can also request items, like this. Ooh. Right? Yep. Took them from here and give them to you. Uh, one thing you need to keep in mind is that this logistics pipe system requires power, so you need a logistics power junction, and just connect any logistics pipe, basic whatever other logistics pipe and uh, give it power and um, it'll it'll be good it'll uh, it uses EU LP or I mean EU MJ or RF and uh, it will power your system and make this stuff work and if you don't have this power then it, it won't work I tried and struggled and I had to consult a wiki and then I was like oh my I'm a I'm a derp <laughs> Next, we have the Magician's Workbench, which is really cool. I 
accidentally learn about this in Direwolf Let's Play. Um, pretty much, it's um, a simple crafting table with with two things here. So I want some I want some wood. Sounds good. Put it all into here. Now I want some sticks. It'll it'll pull sticks out right out of here. No way. And then if you're like, I want buttons now. Gotta clear clear this. I want buttons now. It'll make you buttons. Do not fret, young child. Sticks. Once more. You got this. There we go. Also, it has a cool animation. This thing pulls out because you're crafting with it. Lastly, the not actually crafting, but sort of crafting, we have uh, the uncrafting table. <laughs> so you need levels of enchanting. And first off, of course, you can craft things with it. But then also you can uncraft things. You can put many things into here that require things. So click on here. It will take away the levels and you can take back whatever you need. It'll, it'll work with lots of things, as I said. Um, I don't have nine levels right now, but you can take all the stuff back. Let me demonstrate. Because clearly you don't believe me. What? Uh... There we go. On crafting table. You want you want to you accidentally crafted too many of these, or you accidentally crafted this and you wanted to use it for Thorncraft research, but it's really expensive and you want your items back? On crafting table. Sounds good. Alright. And thanks for watching. This has been Bros Wallace's uh How to Feed the Beast Crafting. If you have any questions or concerns or things to add, please leave them in the comments. Uh Rate, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your grandma. This is Bros Wallace signing off. Hope this has been helpful. Check out my other tutorials. Good day to you, sir. Or ma'am. <laughs>